Hello, good afternoon. I am coming to you live here and we are going to talk about COVID-19 long hauler today. I'm Dr. Serena Satcher. I have a practice called Regenesist Wellness and Health. And uh, our motto is treat yourself to health. The YouTube channel is treat yourself to health and Instagram and Facebook are also Treat Yourself to Health. And I'd love it if you drop me a message there or you can drop a message below this. Um, if you're finding it on YouTube um, or if you're finding it on Facebook, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, you may see excerpts of this on Instagram. Please uh, like the page. And I hope you find this information helpful. We are going to first, I'm just going to uh, let you know a little bit about myself. I am a medical doctor. I am not a chiropractor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a nutritionist. Um, I've been in integrative and functional medicine for a while, um, since 2004. And I've always had the mindset of holistic health and treating the whole person. But in 2004 is when I started my certification process in functional medicine and integrative medicine. I also got uh, certified by A4M and you can look up A, the number four M online and you can see what they're about. It's uh, an organization that hits on functional medicine, integrative medicine, on anti-aging and regenerative medicine. So I'm sa so happy to be with you to here today. And I just want you to know that the reason why I'm doing this is because I know there are a lot of people that are frustrated um, about the after effects of COVID-19. In fact, I've had a couple of family members on both sides of my family and my mother's side and my father's side who contracted COVID-19 and who um, had after effects after they thought they had gotten over the initial um, illness. They had after effects. And in fact, um, I've also seen family members have after effects after the vaccinations. So, and I know from what I've seen online and the fact that the CDC gave an official name to this syndrome, a couple of weeks ago, they decided to name it the post-acute COVID syndrome. And really the lay people have been calling it COVID-19 long hauler or calling it the long hauler syndrome. And I think they've been using that terminology because people that got sick at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, many of them are still having problems with things like chronic fatigue, um, things like uh, having after effects in their heart if their heart was the organ that was affected by the COVID. So I love uh, this quote by Nelson Mandela. One of the things I learned when I was negotiating was that until I changed myself, I could not change others. So I just wanted you to know that I do have some experience in dealing with the after effects of COVID-19 and with the active disease. Um, a couple of my colleagues uh, said these great co quotes about me. One said that she was happy that she called me because she had been sick for about a week when her, she started getting numbness in her leg. And she was grateful because it completely resolved. And then another colleague was grateful because I helped her with her mother and her mother's elderly and she thought that she was going to pass away. And we were able to keep her going. It took about a month, but she's finally back to her baseline. So I know that most of you are aware that in the United States that the insurance card is kind of the golden key to getting conventional medicine, but it may not be quite what we need. 
what you get in conventional medicine with an insurance card is you get pills, medications, or surgery, or a medical device. And what we really need is we need education, we need a food plan or nutrition, and we need exercise that's customized to our needs. I love that Norman Cousins said that each patient carries his own doctor inside of him or her. So what affects our ability to fight off these viruses like COVID-19? All these things, all these listed affects our ability to fight off these diseases like COVID-19. And so why, why have 30 million people in the United States been affected by COVID-19? And why are some people still being affected months after they were in the hospital or months after they had the acute illness? Well, we think it has to do with their immune system. And it probably also has to do with whether they had some predisposing factors because those predisposing factors, there are links between the medications that people are given for these diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease and getting COVID. We know that some of the medications predispose people to get COVID. We also know that these medications cause nutritional deficiencies. So wouldn't it make sense that, you know, and we are giving people nutrients to help them get over COVID when they get COVID, like zinc and vitamin C. Even in the hospital, they are giving people zinc and vitamin C. And that's because, and vitamin D as well, because we figure it out, the scientific community has figured out that some of these deficiencies are playing into the severity of the COVID-19, how long people are in the hospital, all of that. So you may want to know like, you know, how do we how do we decide if somebody has COVID-19 or COVID long haulers? How how do we decide that they have it? And you know, do how many people get the COVID-19 long hauler? Well, the majority of the people that get long hauler are the people that have these predisposing illnesses. And most people recover from COVID-19 within a month or so. Some people continue to have symptoms after their initial recovery. And these are the ones that we call long haulers. Well, how many people are COVID-19 long haulers? I'm sure some of you want to know that. Well, they recently came out with studies in January that were published out of China and also published um, here in the US. And in the Chinese paper, they found that about 76% of people that they looked at at six months out had some lingering symptoms. That's interesting. And really the CDC and the NIH are still looking at it here in the United States. Well, you know, when we talk about these nutritional deficiencies and we were talking about the medications that people with diabetes, obesity, hypertension, the medications that they're on can predispose to COVID-19. Well, this is just my theory and I've recently been looking at some of the scientific literature because they have studied some of the mechanisms of the virus. And it was interesting that the lectin pathway is one of the things that the virus takes advantage of. And lectin is in some of the foods that we eat. 
And some of you have heard me talking about gluten having lectin. And lectin can be like an irritant and it can cause us to have leaky gut if we're eating too much of it. And then if you get leaky gut, then there's a vagus nerve that comes from the brain and connects to the gut. It kind of runs a parasympathetic nervous system that connects to the gut. And that, it can be a, like a highway for when you get leaky gut and there's an imbalance of the microbes in the gut, those imbalances can go to the brain and vice versa. So it can go back and forth and cause people to be sick. And one of the things that COVID-19 does is that it affects a lot of different organs. And there are a lot of different symptoms that go with the COVID-19 long haulers. And I think that many people in conventional medicine that don't understand what we do in functional medicine, because we know about this connection of the brain and the gut, and we've been talking about it for years. And you can go back and look at some of my videos on my website from like, uh, from five, six years ago when I was talking about leaky gut. And, you know, this is one of the things that we know contributes to some of the sequential or some of the long-term effects that we've seen from things like Lyme, from other chronic viral illnesses, um, from some of the problems that people have that go long-term and they get things like chronic fatigue, they may get fibromyalgia, things like that, that conventional medicine has just started recognizing that it's actually a thing because uh, they were teaching us when we were in, uh, when I was in my first residency, they were kind of teaching us that it was in people's heads. But now we know that's not true because of this gut brain connection. We know that's not true. So when people have fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, other chronic symptoms that they are not making this up. There are actually imbalances inside the body that we can find on lab testing. So anyways, some of the symptoms of the chronic lung hauler. Now this is a diagram that I recently found in a paper that's about to be published. It's like on the launch pad. It's not quite published yet, but uh, it's searchable on the internet. Um, and it's a journal that I haven't heard of before, but then it seemed to be under the British Medical Journal heading. Um, but anyways, as you can see, the COVID-19 affects every organ or every tissue in the body can be affected. So some of the symptoms, fatigue, shortness of breath, cough, body aches, pains in the joints, the muscles, headaches, loss of taste and smell, brain fog, memory, concentration issues, insomnia, sleep problems, uh, pounding, kind of rapidly beating heart, rash or hair loss. So, and the risk factors for COVID-19 long hauler are high blood pressure, obesity, uh, male gender, mental health conditions, age, asthma. Actually, the gender for the chronic uh, long hauler is female. The gender for getting COVID-19 is male uh, dominant, but uh, we think it has female don dominance in the chronic form because females have uh, more complex immune, uh, hormonal, um, psychoneuroimmunoendocrine connection slash system. So what are the complications that can result from long hauler? So think about, you know, the same organs like lung failure, heart failure, mental health conditions, PTSD, insomnia, fatigue, cognitive impairment or foggy brain type stuff, anosmia, which means like they can't smell or taste and joint pain. So 
I know a lot of people are going to be asking about whether they should get the vaccine um, and they want to know if there's any association of the vaccine with the long hauler. There's really not enough data for us to say anything about that. Um, there is some data on the complications of the vaccine, um, which seem to be smaller numbers. However, I am somewhat suspicious of the numbers knowing that I have family members where they're finding uh, abnormalities like in lab work and they're actually having symptoms. But I believe that there is a lack of reporting to the appropriate people because there's a lot of paperwork involved with reporting. So I'm sure that many side effects are not being reported. And I suspect that from what I've seen from people in my inner circle, I suspect that there may be some long hauler symptoms coming about from the vaccine. So tell me and I may remember, show me and I will remember, involve me and I will understand. This is a Chinese proverb. You're probably not gonna remember most of what I talked about in this talk today, but I want you to know that there is hope and these are the things that need to be done uh, the underlying causes, the root causes, the things that got the person sick from COVID, the deficiencies, these things have to be addressed. And we know this from chronic fatigue, we know this from fibromyalgia, and we in integrative and functional medicine treat a lot of these problems. So we know how to address the body as a whole, how to have a systematic approach and to get the correct testing. So if you're interested, please contact me. Um, you can send a message. It's best to send an, an email message at info at treatyourself2health.com or to call 703-454-9326, extension zero. Um, you can also post a comment here. Um, you can also reach me through Instagram and Facebook and I will soon have scheduling on Facebook. So. All right, thank you so much for joining me. And I just want you to know that there is hope for long hauler post COVID-19 or post acute COVID-19 like the CDC is calling it. And just, um, I just want you to have hope and to not give up. Find a functional medicine doctor or an integrative medicine doctor who can help you get better because there is, there is a way. All right. Thanks so much.